Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I am Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It is good to be with you for our 900th day together in the Word of God. 900 days we've been getting together day by day to go through God's Word one chapter at a time. Today we are in Jeremiah 24 and uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your Word. Thank you for the blessing of being able to be in your Word day by day. Thank you for all that you've taught us, the ways that you've challenged us and grown us. We pray that you continue to work today to write your word on our hearts and give us faith in Christ as we spend time together in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I, Jeremiah 24. After Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had taken into exile from Jerusalem Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, together with the officials of Judah, the craftsmen and the metal workers, and had brought them to Babylon, the Lord showed me this vision. Behold, two baskets of figs placed before the temple of the Lord. One basket, very good figs, like first ripe figs, but the other basket had very bad figs, so bad that they could not be eaten. And the Lord said to me, What do you see, Jeremiah? I said, Figs. The good figs very good, and the bad figs very bad, so bad that they cannot be eaten. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Like these good figs, so I will regard as good the exiles from Judah whom I have sent away from this place to the land of the Chaldeans. I will set my eyes on them for good and will bring them back to this land. I will build them up, not tear them down. I will plant them, not pluck them up. I will give them a heart to know that I am the Lord and they shall be my people and I will be their God for they will return to me with their whole heart. But thus says the Lord, like the bad figs that are so bad that they cannot be eaten, so I will treat Zedekiah, the king of Judah, his officials, the remnant of Jerusalem who remain in this land, and those who dwell in the land of Egypt. I will make them a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth, to be a reproach, a byword, a taunt, and a curse in all the places where I shall drive them. And I will send sword, famine, and pestilence upon them until they shall be utterly destroyed from the land that I gave to them and their fathers. That is Jeremiah 24. It's a short chapter, very straightforward. Um, Jeremiah is given a vision. It's at a time when part of the people of God have been taken off into exile. This is probably the time when Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were taken off into exile, probably in this first wave, this early wave of the Babylonian exile. And, you know, the, the natural human perspective of what's going on could be to say, well, Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, the officials of Judah, the craftsmen, the metal workers, this is kind of a cream of the crop, like, like taking the cream off the top of, of the of the milk because it separates so kind of what they're doing. And that's why the, the promising youths uh, of among the noble families like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be taken off, that they're being judged. The people taken off in exile, they're being judged. They're being sold down the river. They're being taken to a faraway land. They're going to be brainwashed into Babylonian ways of thinking. They're basically gone. That's, that's the natural, normal human perspective. Oh, well, those people... God must have been very mad at them. They must be cursed. They're gone off into exile. The end. But God is always working. And God is always working in ways that we don't expect. He's accomplishing things that we would not predict, that we would not expect, and that don't seem to be normal from a human perspective. And so, it is actually the people being taken off into exile who are the good figs. Jeremiah has shown two baskets of figs, good figs, first ripe figs, the other ones very bad so that they could not be eaten. I have a little bit of personal history with good figs and bad figs. I've been to Israel, um, 
have seen the good figs of the land of Israel, um, which are quite good. And then I've also had a, a fig bush in my yard. When we lived in South Carolina, there was a fig bush in my yard and I never got to harvest them because there were these bees that would come and they would just bore into the figs and eat them from the inside. And so by the time you got to them, they were just rotten and just like they had been devoured. And so I've experienced good figs and I've experienced bad figs, disappointingly. And so here, the good figs are the ones who have gone away to the land of the Chaldeans. God has set his eyes on them for good. Ezekiel is among this group as well. And you think of what God accomplishes through that group. Ezekiel and Daniel, two major books of the Bible that come from this exiled group. God is working among this exiled group. God is going to use them to be a witness to the pagan nations. God is there. I will give them, verse 7, I will give them a heart to know that I am the Lord. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with a whole heart. Now, the ones who were left behind in Jerusalem, they probably thought, yes, the Lord has spared us. We must be God's favored people. There were even some people who ran away to be in Egypt. And they must have thought, ha, we escaped. The Lord has protected us. But again, the way things look from a human perspective may not be the way that they actually are. And God says, no, Zedekiah, king of Judah, his officials, the remnant of Jerusalem who remain in this land, as well as those who flee, fled to Egypt, they're going to be a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth, a reproach, a byword, a taunt, a curse in all the places where I drive them. They're the bad figs. They're going to be a negative example. The ones who went to Babylon, they're largely a positive example. We think of Daniel. He, he very quickly becomes one of the most important, preeminent, exemplary people among God's people in all of history. Think of Ezekiel and the powerful prophecies that he sees there. And so this is God working in ways that we don't expect. How can we apply this? Well, we need to be careful not to judge things according to human perspective, or natural reason. Because we need to remember that God is always at work and that God is doing things that we may not expect. Sometimes we can experience a disappointment in our lives, something that is unwelcome, something that seems like a setback. Maybe even we're tempted to interpret it as God's judgment against us, but God may be working out a greater good that we do not yet see. At the same time, we may see someone who's very blessed, who's materially prosperous, who's doing well. And we may think, wow, God's being so good to them, but maybe not. Maybe God is testing them and maybe they're going to fail the test and we should pray for them. Don't ever judge things according to human standards. Remember that God is always at work and trust him no matter what circumstances he brings to you. Don't boast in relatively good circumstances from a human perspective and don't despair because of relatively bad circumstances from a human perspective. God's ways are not our ways. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you are always at work. Thank you that you never leave or forsake your people. Even when we fall into hard times, even when it seems like we are going backwards, you are at work. Help us to trust your work and not our own understanding of that work. Help us to trust your promises and not what our eyes can see and our reason can understand. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me for Jeremiah 24. I believe we're going back to the Gospel of John tomorrow. Have a blessed day in the Lord.